Thank you for joining in. This is a Trading Topic Tuesdays, guys. Glenn and Reed here. We are founders of Hawaii Trading Academy, and our goal and our mission is to help cultivate profitable traders, eventually get them funded if they choose to, you know? Um, the way we do that is through our online community. we uh, creating tons of content. Um, we are in the process of creating more and more courses for you guys to just join in and learn and as we go, you know, because... You know, even though like Reed and I, we've been in this game for uh, some time now, but we're always learning every week, man. Every week, we just learning and learning. And so, that is kind of the the, the tone we want to continue on with all of you guys and sharing and and pro, you know, be just give yourself a clap for just being on and pursuing that more learning curve. You know what I mean? You're not stopping because that's important. Like we just think, like I thought when I was growing up. You know, going through school, grade school, college, that's where the, the book stops, man. You don't, you don't read anymore. But, you know, the, you got trading and you're just constantly learning. There's just a, it's a new world, new perspective, lots of, lots of wisdom to gain and knowledge. And being around people, people like you guys. So thanks for joining in. Um, we are, the goal with this uh, Trading Topic Tuesdays, you know, we put these calls on for you guys. We've been doing it for quite some time now, and, you know, we cover everything and anything trading. Um, if you're, you're just joining in tonight, um, yeah, like I said, we're going to spend this time that we have together talking about a topic, diving into a topic with trading. So tonight's topic, man, tonight's topic is good. It's going to be, it's uh, relating to, like, current events, you know. Um, you know, before we dive into that, like who's heard of, uh, uh, was it Amazon Prime? Prime Day, Prime Day, Reed. Yep. Yeah. yeah, so Prime is going to, they announced that they want to do a second weekend of Prime Day. I don't know if you guys heard that in the news, but I was talking to Glenn last night about this. And it's kind of uh, interesting because you have an economy that's going into recession and then we have high inflation and then Amazon comes out with this idea like hey you know what let's have consumers spend even more money and to me that just melted my brain because i'm like that doesn't make any sense to to us but like i guess most normal society it does right but then also ben also had a second point of view um where amazon maybe they they're hurting right and so they need to create a second amazon day so i mean it's just it sounds like it's just a it's just interesting. That's all I'll say about that. Yeah. It's all, everybody's feeling it. You got that uh, saying with uh, Bed Bath & Beyond, right? They're lowering their ACs to keep costs down. Oh, no. really? Did not see yeah. that? Did not see that. That's okay, good. where do you get yeah. your news information? So actually, Def Glenn and I, we were... <laughs> Definitely funny. not we were CNN. Just <laughs> not CNN. Not, not, yeah, not CNN, but like it's um, it's actually through Insta, Insta Media. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it is Insta media, us uh, Instagram, social media. We follow a couple of um, um, stock market news, and like Glenn and I, we usually never follow the stock market, like what's happening in major companies. But uh, just because we want to help keep everyone informed, we pay attention to the stock news now. So it's like stock market news on Instagram. That's the handle. Um, I'll type some in, but Bloomberg yeah, Business. Bloomberg. That's another one we look at. So Yahoo. just uh, multiple yeah. resources. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Just through stories. Right. So, I mean, yeah, lots of people feeling it in this, this market environment. Um, it's it's coming down to some, you know, there. I think there's uh, a feeling going around, right, with the consumer confidence, you know. And I want to go jump into my screen share um, to start kick off our presentation tonight. You guys can see this, right? Yep. Trading in a recession. So tonight's topic is trading in a recession. You know, we cannot ignore the fact that our, um, you know, all the things are going on. Higher in prices, inflation, market has off been off uh, 19, 20% uh, for the S&P 500 from the highs. So, yeah, we are and the market markets are going right. The markets are always going and it reflects the price reflects all the information that's going on um, currently, right? Whether it be Prime Day number two or 
Bed Bath Beyond is hurting, you know, it, ref- it was all their P&E ratios and all that, their cash flow is going to reflect all in the price, you know. And so we want to focus on like tonight's topic, which is a consumer sentiment. When I heard this, like I would hear this term throughout the years and I never really paid attention to it, you know. And I was like, you know, what does this mean? Consumer sentiment. So I wanted to break it down, right? Consumer is a person who cha- who purchases goods and services, right, for personal use, right? Consumer. Even businesses can be consumers. Um, we're a consumer of Zoom right now, you know. And so consumer, that's what consumer means. And sentiment, you know, sentiment is an attitude, thought, or judgment prompt by a feeling. So these, these are uh, dictionary.com definitions and you know we're breaking it down i like to just break down these terms to simple stuff because i'm a simple person man i need to understand so sentiment is an attitude so if you put those two together consumer sentiment it's kind of just the the, the confidence of um what the average people or the consumers are feeling towards the economy right now the u.s economy in particular and so this is a cool study that we came across from Bloomberg. I think this is from the University of Michigan. Um, we this is I think this was released a few weeks ago, but we hit a record low of um, consumer confidence, you know, and we're like, OK, like, yeah, you can see the, the years previously that that were um, the recent lows, which was about 2008. And I think we had this big recent dump from 2020. And so you got it. You know, we're going to take this into relation on what happens in the market, what to expect and how to even translate this. You know, like how does this graph affect us when we approach the market? Essentially, you know, I just want to bring up these. This is a cool piece of information. You know, I'm, I'm not just trying to be the news tonight. <laughs> there's there's a point for this, right? So yeah, there's a re- it's a record low right now. I don't know how they measure it. Fifty point two consumer sentiment index. Okay, so maybe there's a ticker for this. I don't know, um, but that was very interesting. Very interesting. I came across this, and so this is a cool another stat that I I've we've came across too. So personal income, if you're taking the personal income of, I think the U.S. Um, consumer. Overall, the personal income has increased to 107 billion, 107.2 billion, or 0.5 percent at a monthly rate, while consumer spending increased to 185 billion, or 1.1 percent. Uh, d- this was March this year, you know, and so our spending clearly is exceeding our income as a whole economy. Um, the increase in personal income primarily reflected as an increase in compensation. So you know, through our, our paychecks, W-2s, whatever. Personal saving rate was 6.2% in March compared to uh, 6.8% in February. Meaning, so this was uh, a stat from the BEA.gov um, website. So spending is more, earnings are less, savings are getting lower. So that's kind of, if you just look at those three numbers, those three factors, the average consumer is tapping into their savings because the spending is higher. Maybe they're just keeping up with the inflation and whatnot. You know, so that's just an interesting stat. Um, you know that this is what's happening in in the marketplace nowadays. You know, so similarly, what does that mean for traders? How does that? How do these stats affect the traders' confidence? Because um, as traders. We somewhat have to stay grounded in today's market environment. We need to understand that, hey, these things are going on. Powell's going to be speaking. They're going to raise interest rates. That way we can help. We can navigate our portfolio, our trading in the best way possible. We're not going to go long bonds all the way or, um, you know, just go long in all the indices because if if all the details or, or fundamentals are just adding up to not just being good, you know, um, all the stocks are getting crushed, even though their earnings aren't way off, they're getting crushed, all these things. So as a trader, like we have to be aware, but also 
remain disciplined. You know, I don't know if you want to add anything to that, Reid. No, I was going to say I'm I'm silent right now. I like because uh, we're about to get into the points and how does this affect our confidence, our traders confidence. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm excited yeah. for this one. Sweet. So, you know, I wanted to use different examples on like how it translates. So when I brought up that other, this other um, chart right here, this consumer sentiment index, right? So let's look at this peak where my mouse is between, that's, it looks like it's pointing at from 08 to 09. So we have this nice drop here, yeah. And so, um, like I said, I don't know how what metrics they use to measure this index, but let's look at that 0809. So this is a S and P 500 chart of the 08 crash, and you can see it pretty much correlates pretty well with that um, index, that sentiment index, the consumer uh, confidence, you know, was definitely dropping. And that translated to falling uh, prices in the S and P, and it, it made a low at uh, let's see where where were we at? Made a low of four fifty five. I, I cut out the other the top the high of the chart, but that's a big drop. And oh eight, you know, a lot of people went through it, and it wasn't always a great. It wasn't a great time, you know. Lots of stuff was happening, and the the market. Um, bubble popped right the mortgages and so it was just a rough patch for a lot of people but I just from a technical point you know on that that consumer index it just trying it just shows right here that okay if confidence is bad you know that it's gonna reflect somewhere on the price right it's like you you go to a restaurant and then or before you go to a new restaurant a new like something opens and then all your friends go right just just a, a little analogy all your friends go to this restaurant and they just have a bad experience and then they tell you what is your uh view about that restaurant you never even gone yet right you're gonna have a you're not gonna be confident in that restaurant right because of all the things so you're not you're gonna go in with low confidence or you know they're gonna just it's gonna spread and then that business isn't gonna do well eventually because they're not going to have any customers you know and so that's what i what comes to mind when i compare the sentiment for that um so let me jump back into this so here's another chart of the s p 500 more recent times if you look on the right side of the chart we're chugging since 2019 we just kept going or no way it's 18 2018 big strong bull run Nice pullback. This is the daily chart. We peaked up at the end of 2020 and it just went, or yeah, we're at, yeah, peaked up at the beginning of 2020, sorry. And then COVID happened, right? And that has a correlation. I think it's shown on that consumer index chart as well. So we're at that level 100 and then it just went straight line. Fell off the cliff, they say. So it does reflect in the charts, okay? As well as speci specifically the one we're looking at right here, the S&P, right? And so for those who were short in this market, well, even though the economy wasn't doing well, th that person's trading was doing well, okay? <laughs> Plain and simple, um, because of these big moves. If you look at the, the size of these daily bars leading up to that event, last uh two years ago so we're let's look at uh october 19 so we have some very just very steady movements nothing too crazy right you peaked up and then you just got these massive big red candles just just going nuts and the market tries to recover or people try to cover their positions and whatnot it just tanks some more so it was just essential free fall volatility increases there you know People are either on the sidelines or people are getting crushed. And so that's kind of there. So these are the things we observe when we're entering or in these type of environments, you know, uh, with with all the things stirring up recession. There people are saying recession, um, 
lots of people are saying we're entering bear, a bear, uh, what do you call, market, right? Bear movement. And so during these environments, we're, 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 we observe that the market moves, right? Volatility increases, okay? That means bigger ranges. That means you pump up 100 points one way and then come down 300 points the other way and then vice versa, right? So more risk, bigger ranges, but the market's moving, okay? And we, you know, we're just going to be talking about how the consumer sentiment can translate or affect our trading. So number one, market moves, volatility. Number two, nothing new under the sun. Okay, markets are cyclic. Cyclic. Am I saying it right, bro? Cyclic. <laughs> yeah. Cyclic. So markets are they have cycles. If you go on a big wide, um, just a big view of like the past. 100 years, you're going to notice that the market moves in cycles, right? We're going to have a boom. Uh, I think George Soros coins it his boom and bust theory, trading theory. And he that's the, his kind of trading style. He'll, he'll ride the boom on the economy of a country, and then he'll ride that bus when they go down. So his big trade, for example, was that uh, he, sh he broke uh, Barings Bank, I think, billion, billion dollar short. Bank of England? So one of those. British Pound. I think it was British Pound he broke, huh? Yeah. The Bank of England. Because he understood that these markets are, are cyclic, that they're, they move, right? And there's their cycles to them. Um, there's all these stats out there. You can go start digging into them if you want to do some more research. Some people estimate the range, the amount of years between each crash, right? We have a rise, then we have a crash, we have a recovery, then we have a rise again, crash, recovery, and so on. And you're going to see that in the, like in the past, you know, I could pull up like the past 30 years in S&P, we're going to see those cycles. We're going to go, you know, 1929 crash, two years to recover, and then the market starts booming again. So in addition to market, the consumer confidence rises, you know. So it's that's kind of the correlation we're kind of making here. Number three, you know, when as retail traders, individual traders, we have the, um, like a big pro of ours is we can move in and out of the markets. That means we can choose what we want to trade. We can le stay. I mean, stay out of certain markets. We don't have to. We don't have to always be in. And you know, as we always have that option of just riding the coattails of these big guys. So find out where the money is flowing. The money just because money is taken out in one sector, one market, right? For for example, I think uh, crypto. I think one trillion of market cap is gone or, you know, taken out, taken out. So that where that money move, it, it doesn't just disappear. It, it goes somewhere, right? So there's all these different ways to track those big transactions. But you, what I'm looking at is past the transaction. I'm trying to understand, okay, a big bank like JP Morgan, they just laid off a thousand employees a few last week or so, okay? That's, I think, in their real estate or mortgage division. And so what does that tell you as a big, big corporate company like that? They're buckling it up and minimizing the risk for uh, mortgages, you know? And so they're, they're just cutting their losses early. And it's, it's unfortunate for those employees, but, um, you know, that's what's happening. Netflix is cutting. They cut a bunch of employees as well. And even though like those two are totally different companies, it's just showing, you know, you're taking those clues on like, okay, you know, what are these companies up to? What do they know that we don't know yet? Because as individuals, a lot of the times we get news late, right? Unless you're, you tap into like those paid news feeds, you can go ahead and do that and, and get the latest, you know. Um, a lot of these things don't even make it on those news feeds. A lot of it is just quick phone calls or dinners expensive dinners and be like and between those wealthy people and they'll share 
They're like, hey, we're going to be doing this, you know? And so, um, and I've, I've experienced the, you know, being in proximity with these people. They, they have different conversations, man. And they give you information that you can act upon and really, you know, put yourself in the best bet, you know, in a way. So big buyouts of companies, you want to look at that. Um, there's always that, that rumor recently that FTX is looking to buy Robinhood, the, um, the trading um, broker. So, you know, you got that merger in it may be up in the air. We don't know yet. Um, so that kind of lowers the confidence for Robin Hood uh, stockholders, possibly, right? And so what is that? If that tells you that they're going to be taking over, it could be a good thing, too. If they got in at a good, a low price, maybe if, the, if, if it's a better, a good acquisition or a good merger, then it, it's going to be working out well, you know, working out well. One thing I wanted to mention, like when you said that uh, a lot of things happen uh, before we find out, and usually when whenever it hits the news, it's already too late. Like the market will actually move in a technical format and then we'll see articles on the news or like stories on Instagram, you know, then you see the news come out. And that's why like Glenn and I focus so much on the technical aspect of trading because the market will let us know what's happening. We don't need the news to let us know. The news almost tells us like, oh, yeah, by the way, you were right. This is what happened. Or we're just telling you what the market did. Not that you were right, but, you know, you get my point there. And then um, also like, yeah, Tesla is another one, another company. They just laid off 200 uh, autopilot workers in a San Mateo office. So, I mean, these big companies are are laying off people by the hundreds, if not thousands and I think we'll get into this next point on why, why yeah. trading is so yeah. like, crucial to life. To to add to that, right when, um, I think I remember this back in end of February this year, I was looking at the charts, and after hours, after trading hours, and um, I noticed that, what was it? Was it the the the, the Dow started dropping? And then I was like, I asked Reed, I was like, dude, you know what's going on? Something's going on, dude. And sure enough, hours later, that's when the news shared that Russia started bombing Ukraine. You know, so the market was already moving, but I just didn't, you know, what, you know, what the news was. So sure enough, like that was that you just sparked a memory that, you know, that I've experienced with this, this observation. Right. So let me jump back in. So one of the best bets, you know, is, is taking a, a risk, a bet on yourself, investing in yourself, you know, um, that always is going to be a, one of the best returns, taking risk, stepping out of your comfort, right? You want to uh, be proactive rather than being a victim of the economy. You want to understand, like, like I said, if you're able to access those, those uh, information with being in proximity with the right people, you can come out um you know good rather than being totally clueless and relying on the local news or whatever for your your uh, information right and uh, what does that mean right what does that mean so like going ahead and, and investing in your learning taking taking newer course classes whatever getting in proximity with the right people right these these people who um you just want to learn from, get mentors from, or whatnot. You know they're they have a they have a good tie to the top of Goldman, right, or, or whatever. That way you can get like a somewhat of an inside pulse on what they may be seeing and what they may be what Goldman is expecting. You know, um, yeah, of course you got to take it with a grain of salt, right? But that that could be a, a difference between having a profitable, successful trading year or a, a, a bust. Can, can I add to the fourth point? Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. So another way I, I see is that taking a bet on yourself is, uh, for example, for me, I took out of the stock market just because we're in this bearish market. And rather than uh, selling and try to capitalize in the stock market, I took that out 
and put it into a, a prop firm and invested to get a, a demo account to what could be, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars versus ver of um, capital to trade with. And so that's what that to me, that's taking a risk at taking a bet on myself. I'd rather do that than, you know, go buy new shoes or go buy things or, you know, certain things like that. Take that bet on yourself. Take the risk on yourself when when you are at that level, you know, no, don't do it right away because <laughs> you could just be throwing away money for sure. But definitely, if you know what you're doing um, and you're confident, I think confidence is more important than that. Um, but confidence in knowing what you're doing. But yeah, that's all I'm like no, for that point. That's it, man. That's it. It's it's uh, knowing, having the right information so that you can leverage what you have now into catapulting, catapulting you into a better position. You know, you know, you got to ask that question. See, you know, throwing it in, no one knows what's going to happen, right, in the future. Uh, but say something is brewing right now, a big crash, right? Where do you want to – you got to ask yourself that question. Where do you want to see yourself after that? Where do you want to be after that, right? There's a good chance we're going to be surviving through that. But how do, how do we want to be after this crash? Uh, my mentor always says never waste a good recession, you know, that's where a lot of wealth transfers happen during these times. Um, COVID reminds me so much, man. There was so much opportunity to to buy uh, during COVID, you know, and there is a massive bull run during the 2020. I want to be cash heavy and ready. Yeah. yeah see, there you go. Sam just said, I want to be cash heavy and ready. Um, <laughs> Let me meet your mentor. <laughs> Carry us. Yeah. So, can we meet your mentor? Glenn, go ahead and share who your mentor is. Yeah. Yeah. No. Are. So, I have a few mentors. Uh, one of the, the mentor I just quoted was Grant Cardone. Um, I don't know, for those who doesn't know, big real estate guy. I think he has over $5.5 billion under management in his real estate portfolio. But I, you know, I've learned, I've found him through social media, but he's, he's a great businessman as well. He owns many, many companies. And um, that's who I've just been learning from and and getting close to and you know taking in all that information you know the way he thinks that's just massive uh 10x if you guys ever met, uh come come across this stuff but yeah uh, i mean tell you having no matter who the mentor is i mean as long as you have something somebody right you can have a bunch you don't want to have too many when you start you're starting to uh get mentors because a lot of it can be conflicting so you know i look up to a few especially like maybe one or two for trading right there's there's we got michael vell um tom basel love their stuff everything else because i mesh directly in that you know and read i'm sure you got some uh trading mentors and you yeah. don't have to know them personally Dude, you know, Brett Steenberger. A, Steenberger. That's one of my time, my my faves right there. Brett and uh Mike, well, not Mike, uh Marcus Mark Douglas. Mark Douglas. Douglas. Those are one of my top two. But I mean, yeah, there's there's a plethora of them, man. Uh Michael Covell, you know, yeah. Steve Burns, a lot of people. But then as far as just mentors in general in life, there's a lot of self-developmental um and mentors that I look up to as well. Yeah. Do I know them? No, I don't. <laughs> but <laughs> your mentor could be anyone, man. Your mentor could be your friend. Glenn is a mentor, you know. Sam's a mentor, so there you go. So all mentors, I like to learn from everyone and anyone. So hey, and don't forget your other half too. They're mentors, man. To our, you know, to us, right? <laughs> My wife is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you want to be the boss? Teaches us patience, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Patience, patience. That and patience. that's why we're good traders. You know, gotta apply the patience to the market. <laughs> but oh. now, nah, yeah, moving on, man. Let's Good jump time. back in. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's do it. And to round it off, right? Always opportunities in the market. Always, when the market is crashing, you know, I do have a a, a more a little bit of moral conflict inside of that voice i'm like dude the market's crashing but you making profits man people hurting out there but i'm like man you know what i'm an opportunist i will be there okay <laughs> um and and you know that's just the 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 game i guess the game we're playing right 
you know, in 2020, I was able to, I was able to ride that trend. Uh, let me just stop that. So back in 2020, that the the market was crashing. Um, I rode a odd dollar short and a USD yen short. I think it was a short, one of those. But it was massive. It was a big, big month for me, you know. And those that those two trades were able to make my year essentially, you know, because it was such a crazy move. Um, and the month after, because it was just whippy. After uh, I think in April. It kind of cut down my my wins, but at the same time, at the end of the year, I was still net net positive, you know, and so that's what you know we're trying to come across is yeah, like stuff is gonna happen, market's gonna move, um, but if you don't jump on that train, man, um, then it's gonna leave, it's gonna leave. Yeah, I just uh, you made me reflect on like just the people I talk to on a day to day basis, like coworkers and just even like friends through social media I run into and they know I trade. So they're like, Oh man, the market's doing bad. How are you doing? I'm like, I don't know, man. <laughs> like at the market to me, it doesn't matter if it's up or down, there's ways to make money in the market, you know? So it's, there's always opportunities. As long as you just follow your trading plan, you're going to come out. Okay. You're going to come out. I think you're going to come out on top regardless of that profit figure, that return ratio, because if you're following your plan, you're going to be su successful when, the market is has the right conditions for your plan. Yeah, and if you don't come out pro profitable, right? You lose some money. That that's another you know thing on your belt, a little pin right there. Be like, hey, I traded through that recession. Yeah, crash. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> um, and they only lost this amount. If it makes you guys feel better, look at how red a lot of these major hedge funds are. Believe it or not, these hedge funds are doing worse than the re regular retail trader. And I mean, again, that's part of like regulations that they they are required to be in certain trades for a certain amount of time. They have to be in a, a number, uh, an amount of trades, you know, during a certain amount of period as well. So, I mean, it's a little different as far as that goes. But I mean, it makes me feel good when I'm like, oh, wow, <laughs> this billion dollar hedge fund is down 20% and I'm only down 2% right on. That's that's oh. a win for me, you know? So the uh, ARK, Kathy Woods ARK fund, A-R-K-K -K, ticker, 63%. Wow. Uh, How does this lady keep getting drawdown. money from people? You're to date. <laughs> You're to date, man. I mean, that happens. They were... Uh, so this is just one of the things that just came out of that came up when you were, were talking about that read. Um, yeah, it happens. These drawdowns happen, and it's real. So, it's real. Yeah, so Kathy Wood, she's a uh, she's the hedge fund. What is it? Owner, manager, head trader? I don't. It's her fund basically. <laughs> but she has billions and billions of dollars, and her fund is called Arc. And what she was famously known for, she blew up during the 2020 pandemic. Uh, fiasco just because she went long tesla and during that time in 2020 tesla you know we all know what happened to tesla it exploded in the in, in the right ways for uh that stock and so she made her most of her money just off of tesla and then she became she became the all-seeing all-knowing person that a lot of the the media wants to to blow up but i mean again we don't know the ins and outs of what her strategies are so Mm -hmm. but it, again it just really feels good almost to see that like i'm okay man like this person with billions and billions of dollars on their management yeah yeah absolutely yeah i mean i would love to just open up the floor you know if anything that uh stood out to you or you resonated with that we just shared you know i'd love to or uh, even bring, questions bring yeah. you out yeah I had to finish my green drink. What about any trade? Yeah, any, any, <laughs> what's up, Sam? A, my put position that I had left a runner for today uh, finished up pretty amazing. I wasn't even expecting that, so <laughs> it was great. Right on. What, uh, uh, what was your position, man? Uh, I posted it up on my um, idea on my um, call it a day pattern. Um, I had you know captured twenty percent and left the runner with a fifteen percent stop loss, and the market just continued to tank all day. So. It was, it was pretty awesome. I was able to close that out um, at like 235%. Wow, nice, man. Yeah. Boom. That's it. That was on the, my majority of my position was closed at the 20%. That was just the runner. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
Oh, yeah. And, <laughs> and Sam is an option trader, for those of you wondering. Uh, so Sam is an option trader. He's And you're in and out of trades fast, right? In and out, yeah. I mean, I think I was in a whopping 10 minutes before I went to go get ready for work. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Yeah, nice. That's how it yeah. is. That's the, that's one way to trade. Call it a day. I and, and I constantly have my finger on the pulse on what's happening. Um, so I'm, I'm able to <laughs> pivot pretty quickly <laughs> if I'm wrong. No, of course, of course. And I feel like um, when we have those outlier moves, right, those those runners, that has a great effect on the rest of our uh, performance during, for the rest of the year. You know what I mean? Because we can run into a little slump or a, a trading losing streak. And with that in mind, having that runner, it's like that extra cushion, you know. And so, yeah, man, that's awesome. Good job, dude. Good job. Now, sure. A couple of trades that I'm looking at right now. So I am, well, actually, I'm in too. So I'm in dollar cad short. Uh, I don't like how it's shaping up on the four hour and the daily. Last night, Glenn and I were um, talking. And this trade, I mean, it was moving nice. It was moving nice for the majority of, of the day or start of the week, you know. I liked it. So I just set an entry order, got entered in. I'm just going to stick to my guns, let it take me out or continue onward. We'll see what happens. Um, one rule I like to live by is like, don't base your decisions based off of one trade as far as like closing or entering the trade. Let the market do what it has to do. So another position I'm in is I got two trades on this one, one entry order. So three total uh, trades that I'm are willing to be in. But this is one position, dollar Swiss short. Uh, this is my current stop loss. Um, other than that, it's really just consolidating. Um, yeah, but other than that, I'm not really looking. Oh, I do like um, US 100. So hmm. I like US 100. I might uh, yeah. get in short on this one. I, li I like it. Um, but I'll be honest, I'm not a person to trade the US 100. This would actually be my first trade in the US 100. <laughs> uh, so that's interesting. I traded the US 30, but very similar pattern. You can see it kind of looks exact. So I'll just kind of switch between the two. You guys see that, how it's a little different. Move this out of the way again. Get it right. So here's US 100. Here's US 30, very pretty much similar charts, right? And they're just the top 100 companies of the US stock market or the top um, 30 companies with the US 30. That's what the number stands for. And so I like, yeah, I'm looking at US 100. That's the only one I'm looking at right now as far as futures and stock goes. I'll cover crypto real quick. Let's see. Yeah, crypto is just in this long range overall bear trend still. So I'm still bearish on this uh this uh crypto you know yeah how's it andrew no worries man no worries we just Bro. finished up the topic <laughs> but we're just uh yeah chatting talking about uh yeah let glenn take it over go ahead glenn yeah let me uh screen share okay good good so yeah as you were talking about the nasdaq or us the us 100 um i was well this is a one hour chart and so like let's start out the daily Okay, peaked up at 16, 8, 10. I can zoom out weekly. So <clears throat> it's it just bring I, I like to start a real, you know, weekly chart. A lot of times I would start with the daily, but just to give a good perspective on what's going on, because it's so easy to get sucked in. You know, if I go five minute for me personally, like I'm like, oh yeah, it's moving this, this and that. Lots of data, lots of data. So weekly, you know, we got a previous high here at, let's see, I'm trying to just move my screen. I'm just gonna draw a simple level, 9,600, right? We had a previous low here at 10,900. And so we t we're we're touch we're closing in on this recent level, um, and those those areas um I might be looking at, as far as for me to have like a bullish stance, I need to have a close above, either well for one twelve thousand seven hundred then the next would be fourteen thousand eight hundred to really show that price is moving, um, so you know this kind of brings a perspective. Like I could just go back and look at the 
previous crashes, right? Oh wait, this is what happened. And then 16, we had a blip from the election right here. Oh wait, where was it? November, yeah, so that one. And then this is a big, yeah. So then we have the 19, slight pullback, and then 2020 was here. And price just kept going up. Um, so I'll, I'll go zoom in. I'll zoom in to daily, and I could just clearly see strong close on Friday, but we closed. You know, I look at closes, and for me that kind of that signifies for me on top of like chart analysis on the direction, you know, and so we had a strong close on the twenty eighth, which was today's trading after markets were starting to open up but then I, then I can zoom in closer four hour and uh, so this is looks like a nice bear move here right lining right. up for sure for sure so this was when people started to get all like oh yeah we're, we're, we're going up but for a brief moment you could ride this short swing for sure there's opportunities to ride that short swing if you say if you enter on this breakout 11,700 write it up and then trail your stop you know you go pick up 300 points that's a win right there yo so you can we zoom in even closer and so i think i did write a swing uh i think last week i was able to capture some some moves now of course you know we had some, some consolidation um uh, between monday and tuesday and then the strong bearish close right here on the hour no, I'm, I'm zooming all the way to an hour. 11,900 close. And it just it, it beat the all the previous lows here. And then following that was just a strong bar here. And so I think that's what, um, you know, you might have been riding some of that wave there, Sam, with that part. But, yeah, it's starting to trickle up again. And we'll see how that goes. It's, it's in a downtrend for me. Um, I'll just be trailing my stops. I currently have some, a position in it. So I'll just be moving my stops as we go. Yep, short-term uptrend. Yep, for sure. Broke. Broke in. Yep, bigger trend is short. You know, there's going to be short-term bull moves in it. You could ride both ways if that's your plan. No, You know, like I said, during these, these times we were sharing earlier, there's always opportunities. So you want to um, just go ahead. If you have the plan, if you have the approach, if that's your system, implement it. If you have a longer term system, so like for me, I, I could have a longer term trend following system running, big short, and then I can have a counter trend short term strategy and just implement that too, you know? And so those, those are different ways to go and um, approach these. Well, then do you take hedges against your long positions? Like say, if you have a full position, do you have like maybe like 5% short just to kind of hold yourself? What if you're wrong? <laughs> you know, just to limit your losses. Like in the, in the same market? <laughs> well, yeah, I'm just saying, uh, so since you're on a four hour chart, yeah, uh, you gotta have a lot of patience and a lot could happen within the, that time frame. Yeah. Yeah, so, so I'm just uh, asking, like, do you generally have a, a hedge? That's a great question. So the way that um, I approach trades, say I'm, 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 we start at, um, say I'm, I'm going short with the, the four hour chart on, on the NASDAQ, right? On the, I cannot place the long trade in the same market because of you just, you're conflicting. So what I try to do, say if I have a short position, I'll go in a non-correlated market whether that could be gold, oil, or uh, Forex, or whatever, and I'll find me a long position to enter in, you know? And that way... Yeah, that, that's one way to hedge, yeah. That's one way, and that's mainly for me to just lower my risk, right? And if those two guys are... Uh, the two trades are winners, and good. But if they're... There's going to be times where it's like a flash, like um, where all the markets are just red, you know, or green, either way, you know. So it's just interesting. But um, normally, that's kind of how I divvy up my positions. 
if that answers a question. Yeah, no, great, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff, good stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'll share a little bit about this dollar source trade because it's a kind of a psychological thing with me. So this trade, I usually don't hold these trades for a long time. It's, um, feels like two weeks, right? It feels a, an eternity in the trading market or in the markets, I should say, especially with my plan. Uh, my average holding is only a day. My average profit for a trade is a day. I'm in and out in a day. And this one has been going on for, you know, almost a week now, or I mean, two weeks. So eight, seven, six, yeah, six days. So tomorrow we'll make it a week, right? And um, I was telling Glenn, like, I really want to close this trade because when the market is constantly consolidating like this, for me, that's a red sign to just get out of the market. So I'm battling my psyche of wanting to get out of this trade. But my plan says this, allow the market to take me out, whether that's a profit or that's a stop loss. So I just need to let the market play and do itself. I, I trust my plan. I'm confident in my plan, but I'm also, I'm still having these thoughts. And I think the key point, you know, like I just want to share because I want um, a takeaway is like, we got to acknowledge these thoughts that we're having about our positions, our trades and our account. Like, okay, even though I'm red, I know that I could come back on a, a position or if i am red I, i'm only going to lose so much on a position regardless when the plan does play out i could get you know seven percent on a single trade you know that's not 200 percent like sam but like for me that, that's this is just the way i trade and if these positions all could turn out to be like a 21 percent move if they all uh, move cr uh, short heavily you know so it's just it's just that battle, that mental battle that you have with yourself in the dark nights when you're looking at your screens, that that's the type of conversations you have to have with yourself. And I have these conversations with Glenn, fortunately. And so I'm able to, he's able to put me on, like, just follow the plan, bro. Just follow the plan. I'm like, Raj, yep. Gotta, gotta set the example, you know, just sticking to this plan. So, I mean, that's just uh, something that I wanted to share about, like all traders deal with this psychologically, you know, even like Michael Cavell talks about it. He trusts his system so much where it's almost like it's mechanical, but still, yeah, you're going to have these doubts about your trading plan, about the market, about your trading style. Did I lose an edge psychologically? You know, it's always questions on the table to be asking ourselves. But I think, you know, what's healthy is when we do ask those it questions, is, is. I think. Yeah, yeah, I think that's how we know. And they, you know, you always hear that term, um, that line. You know, your your number one goal is to preserve capital, right? And they talk about your cash capital, but no one really, you don't really hear that you gotta preserve your mental capital as well. And that's he that's really key, you know, because they you always hear see those stories in in Vegas. You know, that gambler went bust, or that that poker player went traded on tilt was on tilt. That could, that would definitely happen to traders. If say even though you're, you're you're trying to protect your cash, if your mental capital isn't there, it's 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 running short. There, then your decision making will not follow through. You know, for sure, for sure. Right? Yeah. But yeah, I mean that's um you know if you guys have any other things to share or or ask or share or you know we love to hear them, but. You know, we're, we're coming up on the eight o'clock hour and we've, uh, yeah. We'll look. How about that? Are you looking at any, entering any new positions, Glenn? Right now? Yeah. Um, has like, your watch list changed since? Yeah, no, it Sunday? modifies throughout the year, uh, throughout the week. Uh, like, yeah, I so think I did mention now? to you, Ethereum, I entered a Ethereum USD short position and then US oil. I went long. So, yeah, I mean, you know, going back to the question of like, how do I hedge or, you know, nice. maintain my, my trades? Um, that's a way. That's a way. Um, non correlated markets as best as possible. Of course, you, you know, you could say that, oh, they're all measured against the US dollar. I'm like, yeah, you're right. Yeah. But <laughs> in a way, um, you know, I focus on just my current risk, my current exposure in the market, my total exposure. If I was to lose all my trades or tonight, tomorrow, what's what's the pain going to be? And that way I can mentally wrap myself 
and be prepared for that, you know? And that's a key thing right there. To Able to going. sleep at night, right? I, I go, I sleep good, man. I sleep you good. Sleep, sleep soundly. <laughs> yeah. That's one thing to note is like, if you can't sleep and you always want to look at that trade, uh, it's a good warning sign that your body is saying, Hey, maybe I'm risking too much on this position. So I've been there many times. So I, I speak from experience. It's the kind you just tape the eyes open, bro, and just oh, dude, yeah, you're literally physically sick the next day just because you're so weak, you know, like, and That's then you lose the position overnight anymore. <laughs> what was that? Turn on, you had a drop of a dime. <laughs> oh yeah, see, see, but you know yourself, you know, you know that yeah. okay, I can't handle any positions overnight. So boom, that's my new plan. Yeah. So hey, stick to it. Stay right it out, right it out. Good stuff. Tomorrow, um, I think Paul is going to be speaking again. Yeah. 3 a.m. Hawaii Standard his, Time. Needs his limelight. So, uh, you know, that's something too. On, on Like, for example, like these uh, indice markets, right? I've noticed that when there's an announcement ready to go um, coming up, markets will kind of just teeter-totter in an area. Not really have any vol- um, volume yet or, or moves and so they'll just like maintain a level and it, depending on you know whatever the the market moves either up or down that's when it'll um move so we'll see we'll see i'm not gonna close any of my trades down though or not even like adjust it just because of that speech like, you you, eh. you sit on your hands reed <laughs> yes sir <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, like, specifically for the, because some, like, and if it was an NFT or something, you know, or like a a vote uh, for, like, a, what is it called? An election. If it's like a presidential election, I'd close my dollar CAD, dollar Swiss positions, you know, just because I know a lot of volatility happens up and down. Quick whiplashes happen. Yeah. So, yeah. And you, when you not say that. The... Not tomorrow. Yeah, when you say like whiplashes, like if you look at the charts, that will kind of translate into. Let me see what, what uh, like a doji, out. like a low test reversal. Let me try to pull one up right now. Okay, I'll go like yeah, I got I got one on the uh, oil. You got one. Shoot. All right, share it, man. This is the the daily here, so you see this like this dojis, this right here, this candle. I'm gonna circle it for everyone. This one. So that's a what would be called a doji. And uh, what happened was the market opened, dropped down, went up, <laughs> and then closed for uh, basically a neutral position. And then also same with like, uh, you could see it here. You could see another doji here, but you could see this right here and right to the left of this doji is a low test reversal. And what that, that happened is like, you know, something happened. And then it popped back up and it closed there. So that 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 sentiment is actually it didn't continue on in, in, a, in other words. So okay, like, those I mean, retest these, reversals are my bread and butter. <laughs> yeah, I love them. And, especially yeah. off of like significant EMAs or dynamic or uh dynamic support and resistant lines, which is EMAs. But yeah, so this is what happens during like elections, except imagine it on a wider scale or like major news announcements is what I'm trying to say. Like you're going to see big wicks. So let's say I wanted to go long. I'll just kind of put it for an example. Is like if I wanted to go long here cuz I liked it at the time. It looked like a bar like this, right? This imagine this over here. So if I entered before the day even closed, I probably would have been taken out for a loss or I would have. I'm not not even a probably. I would have been taken out in like 3 days here. So entered because I wanted to go long cuz I liked it, but guess what? It closed as a a high test reversal. And it immediately took me out. And so that, that this is just an example of like how you could see like fundamentals happening. I mean, there's during like huge elections and announcements, these things, these dojis and low test reversals, high test reversals, they're going to be like 100 pip spread, 100 point spread just because it, and it'll whip back and forth, you know, up and down right away. So, um, yeah, that's it. My personal experience, I'm not ever going to trade an election. I traded it out of greed. It was in the green. Um, 
after the results, I was in the red and I lost a lot of money. So I'm like, okay, I'm never doing that again, or at least not risking as much as I used to. But yeah, you have anything to add to like as far as fundamentals goes? No, you know, kind of just tune it back in with tonight's topic was the market sentiment. You know, we have all these things um, that to take into consideration, but it comes down to, you know, our trading plan, our discipline, our analysis and our own conclusion of the market. What do we see in front of us? OK, what's what's the price now? What's the price today? There's if ands or buts. But at this, you know, at the end of the day, if you want to get in in the position, if you want to trade, if you want to pull the trigger, you're gonna have to just focus on what you know now, plain and simple, you know, just to kind of wrap it up. Um, and and at the end of the day, that helps you keep your mind clear, helps you stay focused, it helps you to just be somewhat in sync with the market. Yep, yep. And so that was. Um, Tonight's topic was consumer sentiment, how to trade in a recession. If we are in one, I don't know. A lot of people have different definitions, but, you know. Um, that's... We are in a bear market. That's true. Uh, two, two negative growth prints for two quarters in a row. Yeah, that, That's the, the official definition. Recession. Official? recession. Definition. Okay, there you that's go. good. To know. Can you repeat that again? Sorry. Uh, two negative growth prints for two quarters straight is an official recession. Uh, okay. There you go. Yeah, there, you go. there it is. Yeah. Ten quarters of negative growth is a depression. Depression. Ah, all right, all right. <laughs> that is good to know. Painful. There you go. Yeah. On that note, I mean, we are coming up on eight o'clock hour, guys. We appreciate your time. We appreciate seeing everyone's wonderful faces and jumping on and being part of the conversation. Um, thank you guys for joining in. On that note, have a great night, guys. Good to see you. Thank you all. Awesome. Aloha. All right. Bye.